Pokemon Emerald with Plusle and Minin was highly requested, but not even half as much as today's challenge. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Gold with a team of only Unknown? Unknown is a weak psychic type Pokemon on base stats alone, but that's not what makes it totally garbage. It's this move pool. It has one move and can learn absolutely nothing else. Hidden Power has a random type for every Pokemon with it, so every unknown we have will only have one type of attack, giving us a maximum of six different types of attacks. So pretty bad type coverage. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I think that with enough time I can beat the Pokemon Champion, but the post-game fight with Red might require a maxed out team, if I can do it at all. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Unknown, but I'm allowed to use multiple this time. I'll need to use other Pokemon for HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Let's do this. I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Cyndaquil with an unknown so that we can do the full challenge with it. I have no idea what our hidden power type is yet, so I'll have to figure that out. I named my first unknown Metalizer, because I might go through a lot of unknown, so until I can rename them after types, I may as well name them after my Twitch subscribers. Link in the description. Right off the bat, Metalizer was not very effective against Pidgey. Normal resists nothing, so it must be the flying type. That means Metalizer's hidden power is either Bug, Fighting, or Grass. It was also not effective against Caterpies, that rules out it being Bug-type. Last, I had the required Rival fight, and our hidden power was super effective against Totodile, so now we know that Metalizer's hidden power is Grass-type. Not great for early game, but I don't mind it. It's tied as the most commonly resisted type, though, so I will need more unknown pretty early. So let's go get some. Before even the first gym, we can go to the Ruins of Elf and catch some. We just need to do a pretty easy puzzle first. It's a Kabuto, by the way. Now a handful of the alphabet are roaming the ruins, but we don't need every letter to get every type. Everyone we run into will have a random hidden power type, so it's unknown hunting time. What a geek and I put together a shopping list of what six types we want. I was thinking psychic, bug, rock, grass, ice, and ground. He was thinking Ice, Fire, Fighting, Dark, Psychic, and Electric. Both very different lists with similar type coverage, but he won me over by pointing out that having a team weighted towards Special Attack would be more helpful in Gen 2, and that Fire could really help me with Steel types as a result. We can always catch more types and withdraw them when needed, but I don't want this challenge to take forever. Catching 6 unknown would be a lot faster than just leveling up every single type. Here's how we get the types that we need. We need to catch a full party of unknown, then walk around testing their hidden power on local Pokemon to figure out their type until we have a full team of every type that we want. This is an incredibly slow process. It doesn't help that they often run away. Over the course of this, I end up catching 25 unknown. You can see all the rejected ones in this box. I actually wrote in my notes every unknown and its type of attack in case I need them in the future. Can you tell the part of the hunt when I started only catching types super effective against us in an attempt to find a dark type? Eventually, I gave up and just went with a ghost type because I ran out of money for Pokeballs. I figured that the alphabet of unknown might be hard tied to specific types on each save file is the only explanation I have for how odd this is. So here's our team so far. Zoomer is Ice, Jackie Die is Psychic, Leotis Raven is Electric, Mod W is Fighting, Strange Dash is Fire or Fighting, I can't figure out which until after Faulkner, and Sadie Black is Ghost. I'll put their types as part of their names once we can get to the Name Raider and Goldenrod. Let's go take out Faulkner. He opens with Pidgey, but even with his critical tackle, it doesn't really do much and he goes down fast. Last is Faulkner's Pidgeotto, who can take a few more hits. In the end, I ended up going down to one health, but considering that we had backup, that wouldn't really have stopped us. Faulkner is always an easy fight. With that done, we can hunt down a Wooper and figure out Strange Tash's type. And crap, it's Flying type. Alright, well we can work with that for now, but I'll probably want a fire type later, if I can find one. If it is tied to letters though, I probably can't get one until I have Surf. Might not be worth it by then. Not sure, we'll see. Slowpoke well is surprisingly easy thanks to having a psychic type and Jackie Die on the team. Team Rocket loves poison types, and there's a lot of Team Rocket grunts in Gen 2, so Jackie Die might be our MVP for this run. Next run to Bugsy. I wish I had a rock type since it makes short work of his Scyther, but our flying type will have to do. 
Metapod was no issue, so next is Scyther. Keep in mind that although we have different typed attacks, our team is still Psychic type, so Fairy Cutter is dangerous. Between it and Quick Attack, we get taken out before Scyther goes down, so I switch for Jackie Die, the Psychic type, to take out the last sliver of Scyther. Last is Kakuna. It's Poison type, so it goes down in one hit from Jackie, scoring us an easy victory. Next is a rival fight. He starts with Ghastly, so I open with Jackie. He puts me to sleep and uses Lick for ages, but even with it being super effective, it's a really weak move, so when Jackie finally wakes up, we land a one-shot. Zubat also goes down with one shot, but Juggernaut Croconaw is out, and he mops the floor with almost our entire team as we slowly whittle him down and eventually get the victory. I am not looking forward to when this thing evolves again. Finally, we reach Goldenrod City, and I start renaming everyone to have their type as part of their name. This should both really help you guys as viewers and me as the player remember who's what type. After a lot of trainer hunting, we're ready for Whitney's normal gym. Unknown or genderless, so we won't have to worry about attract. Clefairy hit a lot with double slap, but finally in a run, we get to see the reign of terror of Whitney's mill tank. I throw my entire team of six unknown at her as she bulldozes her way through them one by one. Even with a mass of six on one advantage, I couldn't quite take her down. Look at this absolute beatdown. I can't even be mad, it's just impressive. I'm probably going to need a couple more levels on our fighting unknown, but damn, that's one ridiculous mill tank. Second try and we're two levels higher. Clefairy's metronome only uses spikes, so we get into the mill tank fight with full health. I was getting some good hits in and it was looking like I was still going to faint due to rollout building power, but her rollout ended up missing on what would have been the finishing blow, so we were able to hang on and finish off mill tank with one health left. I love when I managed to beat a gym without having to grind like crazy. That's especially hard in this run considering everyone on our team only has one move. There isn't really any room for clever tactics. The Ghost Gym actually does a really great job of leveling up Jackie for us, as Ghastly aren't very tanky and Jackie can just sweep through them all. Morty is a notoriously hard fight since he likes using hard moves to deal with, like Curse. But if we can outspeed him and one-shot him, then I have nothing to worry about. His Pokemon are fast though, so I'll probably need to spend a little more time fighting extra trainers out west. This is the Ghost Gym after all, Shadow Ball would really mess us up. Eventually, I hit level 31 and go after Morty. His first Ghastly and Haunter go down in one hidden power each, but I was mostly worried about his Gengar. He's faster than me, but his Hypnosis misses, letting me hit a big hidden power. Next round, he misses again and I manage to finish him off. If he had put me to sleep, he'd have healed off Dream Eater and I'd probably lose. Last is another Haunter, but we're faster and one-shot him. Considering how we have this high-leveled Psychic Attacker to work with, I go after the Fighting Gym next. Chuck is always easy, he has two Pokémon. His Polyrath survives a hit and does some damage, but it only takes a second hit to take him out. With that though, we run into a Snag. We're not close to being ready for the Steel Gym Leader Jasmine, her Magnemites really mess us up. I've beaten most of the trainers in that area though, so I head east to beat the trainers on the way to Mahogany Town, and up north on the way to Lake of Rage. I also do the Rocket Hideout while I'm in Mahogany. Although they like using Drowsy and Zubat, so it's not the best place to level up an unknown with a Fighting-type hidden power. Still, I'll take what I can get. After all of that, we're at level 34 and I try Jasmine again. Although we do big damage to her first Magnemite, we do get paralyzed. We finish it off, but her second one hits us hard with Thunderbolt. We almost take it out, but a second Thunderbolt takes out Mod W, so we have to end the Magnemite with Jackie. Her last is Steelix, though, and we just don't stand a chance. No one on the team can do even passable damage to Steelix, so even with great luck on Iron Tail missing a lot, we clearly can't win this yet. I decide to take a shot on Price, the Ice Gym Leader instead, still with Mod W. Seal hits a headbutt for a lot of damage, but goes down easy. Dugong is part ice, so we're super effective, doing half his health on the first shot, while we drop to just above half of our health off an Aurora Beam before taking him out. Last is Pilliswine. We need three hits to beat it, so we're lucky that he wastes a turn using Mist. His Fury Attack crits, but only hits three times, although he uses Hyper Potions. Thanks to us hitting him that turn, and the next though, he's back to a sliver. His Blizzard would have taken us out, but he misses, and we land a finishing blow for a pretty simple gym battle. Considering we're still not ready for the Steel Gym, and we can't progress without it, I'll need to grind longer. There really aren't many trainers left, so I mostly have to grind on wild Pokémon, so this takes a lot longer than I was expecting. Finally, we're level 37 and it's Jasmine time again. The two Magnemites get one shot, but Steelex is still brutal. 
Iron Tail hits like a freight train, but it's inaccurate, so I need to bank on that. It misses on the second round as I crit Steelix, getting a total of three big hits in before Mod W went down. I follow up with Jackie, but Jasmine uses a Hyper Potion. I keep chipping away as Iron Tail misses again, giving Jackie an extra attack before also being taken down. Zoomer is out and manages to get a critical hit that was probably the only thing that won us the battle. This is why I wanted a fire type. Even with the fighting type, Steelex is physically incredibly tanky. Fire is dictated by special attack in Gen 2. After that is the Team Rocket takeover of Radio Tower. It's a cakewalk, but I take the opportunity to level up Zoomer so that we have a strong ice user for Claire's Dragon type gym. We do have one rival fight to do though, and I swear I still get Sun Kern flashbacks every time I do this one. He sends out Golbat first, so I have Jackie swat him down in one shot. Next is Sneasel, an ice and dark type, so I switch for Mod W. I take some damage from a faint attack, but fighting is a Sneasel's worst nightmare, so I serve up a one-shot. A monstrous looking for alligator is next as I go back to Jackie for raw power. His scary face misses, and my second hidden power critical hits, we dodged a bullet with that one. I switch back to Mod W to deal with Magnemite in one shot, and back to Jackie to take out Haunter in one shot. That went smoother than I expected. So we're onto the Dragon Gym, and our Ice-type unknown Zoomer is just too low level. If every Dratini I fight only takes half of its health and damage from our attacks, there's no way we have the attack power we need to take out Claire's team. I'm gonna need to level. Have you noticed that Thunder Waves are missing, by the way? It says that it doesn't affect us, but that's just how Gen 1 and 2 explain a missing of status moves. I don't know what's up with that. Thunder Wave is 100% accurate in Gen 2, and we're not ground type. One of my unknown gets hit by it, so I don't know what's going on. I tried asking Johnstone and Whatageek, but there are no clear answers. Whatageek was pretty stumped just like I was, and Johnstone thought it could be a glitch, maybe something weird with the ROM even? If anybody knows, tweet it at me here, because this is confusing. This is the same ROM that I used for every other gold run. I don't remember Thunder Wave randomly missing in any of those, but maybe I missed it? Anyway, there are tons of ground types just south of Dragon Gym, so it's pretty easy to grind our ice type on it, but this kind of emphasizes the problem with this challenge. There really isn't any room for tactics, just matching types and then using our basic damaging moves until someone wins. This is why I held off on the unknown challenge for months, even though you guys just kept requesting it. I was worried it'd be really boring to watch. I think the best challenges are the ones where I can get creative with the moves. With an unknown challenge, though, the solution to winning a fight is never to change my strategy since I can't really use different moves. All I can do is level up more and hope I'm strong enough. Thanks again to my friends Mandy and Dylan from the channel My Dumb Boyfriend for keeping me sane while grinding. They're completely 100% accurate anime reviews made for great watching. A while later and we're level 50 so I take another crack at Claire. Her three Dragonairs put up a strong fight thanks to Thunder Wave and Zoomer went down before taking out the third one. Jackie finished it, but last is her ever-terrifying Kingdra. It takes the combined effort of Jackie, Leotis, and Mod W to take it out. And even then, we only won thanks to Kingdra using Smokescreen a bunch, and without us actually missing. It was an incredibly close fight that easily we could have lost. Next up is the Rival and the Elite Four, so we're gonna need a stronger team for sure. I take the opportunity to finally start leveling up Sadie with an experience share since we haven't used her the whole game. During the grind, I find an absolutely hideous looking shiny Raticate. I caught it, and I look forward to never using it. Final rival fight time. Sneasel's out first, so I have Mod W one shot it. Next is Golbat, so I switch for Leotis. Bite hits us hard, making us flinch missing a turn, but two hidden powers take it out. Next is Magneton, so it's back out to Mod W, although I do get paralyzed as I take it out. Haunter's next, so I go for Jackie for an easy one shot. Kadabra's next, so Sadie is out for a one shot, and last is for Alligator, so I go back to Leotis, but go down to a slash in a future site, so I send Sadie back out to finish him off. After that, and another brutal round of grinding, we have the team up to level 50, and I think I'm ready to make an attempt at the Elite Four. Make your final guesses on if you think I can beat the Elite Four at this level or not. Let's do this. First is Psychic Trainer Will, and for once in a challenge, he's brutal. Forgive me if I don't give a comprehensive blow-by-blow, -blow, because if I do, with this battle, we'll be here all night. The problem is that both of Will's Zatu's and his Jinx are faster than us despite the level gap. That's a problem because both of his Zatu's use Confuse Ray and his Jinx uses Lovely Kiss, making him amazing at shutting us down. 
Also, our unknown's bad stats are really starting to cause issues now that we're mostly fighting fully evolved Pokémon, and our obvious lack of move choice means that all we can do is attack and hope we win. Eventually, we beat Will, but he takes out almost the whole team, so I have to drown the entire team in revives and healing items in between battles. Second is Poison Trainer Koga. Ariados is out first, so I send out Strange, but it's still not enough for a one-shot. Thankfully, Giga Drain doesn't hurt us so much, so the second hit takes him out. Fortress is out next, and our lack of a fire type makes this hard, so I send out Jackie. You might be wondering why I'd use a psychic type, but between the same type attack bonus and being special, it's actually probably our highest damage choice. We end up taking it out, but not before taking tons of damage. Venomoth is next, so I switch for Strange, although the spikes that Fortress laid down mean that we take damage every time we switch. We get confused, but we don't hit ourselves, so Venomoth goes down fast. Muck is next, so it's back to a battered Jackie, but we go down to a Sledge Bomb. So I send out Leotis to try and slowly whittle him down. I take him out, but not before Leotis faints, leaving Zoomer to finish him. Last is Crobat, so I keep Zoomer out. He uses a double team and starts laying in with some wing attacks. We almost take him out when Koga uses a full restore, so Zoomer ends up going down, and the fight had to be finished by Sadie. That was a rough one. Normally, I'd move right on to the next Elite Four member, but look at the state of our team. I will genuinely run out of revives from in-between battles at this rate. It's incredibly clear to me that we can't beat the Elite Four at this level, so I'll need to go grind again. Our stats are just too low to get away with having one basic move per Pokémon. It's back to the grind. At least this is a decent grinding area. There's a house that I can heal at and passably leveled wild Pokémon to fight. I would fight the Elite Four for levels, but the first member of the Elite Four is such a brick wall that it would be much slower, so I have to resort to this. A long while later and we're level 60, these stats are for sure better, not amazing, but better. Let's give it a go. Will goes much smoother as you'd expect, mostly thanks to us being faster than his Zatu's and Jinx. It also helped that he mostly tried to use Psychic and we resist that. I switched up the team a lot to spread out the PowerPoint usage and we got an easy victory. Next is Koga, and he goes much smoother as well, to the point that we don't lose a single Pokémon in the entire fight. We really need those extra levels. Fighting Trainer Bruno is third, and it's another total beatdown. He gets in some shots here and there, but never puts a single one of our Pokémon into any serious danger. Last is Karen, the Dark-type trainer. Umbreon goes down in two hits from Mod W, although she gets a Sand Attack in. Murkrow is out, and I probably should have used the Electricity or Ice, but Mod ended up doing a decent job. Houndoom goes down in one hit. Gengar is next, so I switch for Sadie, and win in one shot, thanks to her using Curse and lowering her own health. Last is Vileplume, so I switch for Strange and take it out with a couple hidden powers easily. You'd think that the Dark Trainer would have used more Dark moves. I heal up in between fights and move on. Finally, we're on to Lance, the Pokémon Champion. He starts with a Gyarados who's double weak to electricity, but Leotis is still not able to one-shot him. All he does is Rain Dance, though, so I easily finish him off. Next is his first Dragonite, so I switch for Zoomer for that double type advantage. I hit hard but get paralyzed with a Thunder Wave, and hit with a Hyper Beam for almost half of our health before taking him out. Next is another Dragonite, so I just keep trying to attack, but get crit with a Hyper Beam and have to switch for Leotis. It does almost no damage, so I just keep trying to whittle him down as Dragonite uses weak moves like Twister. Eventually I take him out, but I lose a lot of health in the process. Next is Aerodactyl, so I keep Leotis out and hang on from a Hyper Beam with 6 health, and 2-shot Aerodactyl thanks to a lucky crit. Second from last is Charizard, so Leotis hits hard before going down to a flamethrower. I have Strange finished off in two hidden powers, although we get hurt badly from a flamethrower. Last out is Lance's last Dragonite, and I keep Strange out. The fight is incredibly close, and at one point we survive a Hyper Beam with one health, but he uses a full restore and takes out Strange. But I still have a few unknown left, so I switch for Jackie and finish him off, winning this run. With that, we're the new Pokémon Champion, and we get into the Hall of Fame. Credits are also we've beaten the challenge, but Gen 2 has all of Kanto in it as well, including a brutal secret final boss fight with Red. I wholeheartedly believe that the only way I can even remotely stand a chance against Red is if I leveled up my entire team to level 100, and even then I'd probably lose. Well, I don't want to make this video late, I know you guys like consistency, but I'll be damned if I don't at least try getting to Red. Honestly, I'll be happy if I can even beat Blue.
Kanto is mostly easy thanks to the levels here not being any higher than the Elite Four until we get to the 8th Gym Leader, Blue. He is always a brutal challenge, and easily the second hardest fight of the game. Pidgeon is out first, so I open with Leotis. Two hidden powers with one critical hit takes it out easily, so we switch for Sadie for Alakazam. Despite not being very effective, his psychic hits us hard, but we took him out in one hit. Right on his next, I switch for Zoomer and get hit by a massive earthquake, hardly hanging on to win. Gyarados is next, so of course I send out Leotis. Gyarados wastes his time turning a sandstorm into rainfall, so we easily have time to finish him off. Executor is out, so we use Strange and get Leech seated, but it's an easy win thanks to him charging for a solar beam. Last is RK9, an absolute beast. We throw our entire team at him, and one by one, he takes out everyone. We would have won if he didn't heal, but this was an incredibly one-sided beatdown at the end. I decide that I have enough time for one last real grind. I'm gonna get the entire team to level 65, and if that's good enough to beat Blue, then awesome, but if it's not, I mean we are the Pokemon champion, so that's worth being proud of. I think it's clear at this point that Blue is beatable with enough levels, and that Red is almost for sure not beatable, so in the interest of not making this video late and not wasting your time, let's do one last attempt at Blue. This time goes so much better that Leotis is the only one who faints before RK9, but he is still faster than us and hits like a falcon arrow. Once again we throw our team at him one by one, slowly chipping away at him as he two shots most of us, until finally, Sadie is able to survive a flamethrower and finish him off. With that victory, we have our last major win of the run. I mean, I'll try the red fight, but does anyone honestly think that I'm gonna win? This is probably the hardest fight that I'd ever have to take on in a run. Yeah, I beat Pokemon Fire Red with one Magikarp months ago, but I was allowed to use items in battle for that. Still, I know you guys will want to see how red goes, so let's at least give it a try. It starts off well with us beating down his overleveled but still pretty weak Pikachu with Sadie, mostly thanks to a crit. Next is his always powerful Espeon, and it is just hilariously one-sided. Despite us resisting Psychic, Espeon hits so ungodly hard that we're down to one unknown when we'd finally take it out just to get finished off in two shots by the following Snorlax. Yeah, we don't even remotely stand a chance, but I don't even mind. We beat the Pokemon Champion, and somehow even beat Blue, without being at a ridiculous level. I can tell you that I sure feel like a winner. I had no idea the grinds in this run were going to be that bad, but hey, for once the prediction at the start was correct. I'm not 100% sure what challenge I want to do next, but I'm thinking I might do a run where I can only use moves that you can learn with TMs and HMs. Maybe I'll make it a single Pokemon run at the same time. Whatever it ends up being, I'm going to try my absolute best to make sure it's ready for you by next Saturday as usual. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what we should do next. Also, check out the playlist in the description if you want to watch all of the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, my friend What a Geek and I are doing a black and white randomizer playthrough over on his channel. Also, come over to my Twitch TV streams and tell me this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.